Well, well, well. Sorry I'm late, but we've reached our very last Mountain Blade Bannerlord news post of the year, and we still have not what we crave so much. I suppose it's time to talk about what we do have, though. On December 13th, Tail Worlds hosted a Q&A featuring Salim, a gameplay programmer on the campaign team. He talks about what he does during his, oh my god, deja vu. Anyway, he talks about how his role involves designing and implementing various gameplay features such as quests, character perks, kingdom decisions, the barter system, and so forth. Some tasks require elaborate design meetings to discuss the feature thoroughly, so he spends some of his time attending the meetings if they are having any. What he likes most about Bannerlord is the fact that the game presents itself as a sandbox environment to the players in which they are free to choose their own path. Whether it's fulfilling the fantasy of becoming a king, leading vast numbers of men, or being a prominent merchant that controls the economy of the realm. The most difficult thing he's seen slash solved during production would be the fact that they are creating a living medieval world in which parties travel from one settlement to another. Raid settlements, buy and sell goods, lay siege, and all sorts of things you would not expect them to do. And when that's the case, it can be daunting to track down a bug with unknown origins. One time the QA team encountered a caravan that decided to lay siege on a settlement while it was inside. Caravan shouldn't be able to lay siege at all, and they most definitely shouldn't be able to attack a settlement they are inside of. The hell are you doing over there, Tail Worlds? Currently, his main focus specifically is on the children's system they recently announced. To be more specific, the transition of babies into childhood and into adults, where they will be positioned, how the player will react to them, etc. Besides that, he's also doing some adjustments to the barter system. Sounds so cool, by the way. It also looks like they've encountered a bug during development in which town folks themselves would turn into children. For a bit there, I thought this was an actual child that wanted to grow up to be a guardsman. I want to make that happen, actually. They say that in terms of how much freedom the campaign will have, it's as non-linear as it can get, as we all know. Players are completely free to choose their own actions. The game does not force you into a fixed path. You can do any quests, be a trader or warrior, establish productive enterprises, send down caravans and propose kingdom policies that support merchants, etc. If you are more of a warrior, you can amass a colossal army and conquer the whole realm. You decide who you'll marry, how your clan will persist throughout the generations, and the child of yours that will inherit your legacy. In last week's blog post, they went over a new feature of the game, most notably the persuasion system. The persuasion system is based on the premise that, even in the dark and desperate lands of Calradia, there are some things that money can't buy. An honor-bound emir may feel compelled by his oath of fealty to stick by even the vilest of sultans. A conniving one might turn down the choicest of bribes because, frankly, he doesn't think you have what it takes to win a civil war. Persuasion is a mean to help players overcome these reservations. For instance, if someone were to do a favor for you, you'd make up for it later down the road. If you have a reputation for generosity, people will be more inclined to believe you. Likewise, if people know you take honor seriously, they'll be reassured that no one will ever blame them for breaking their oath to the Khan, who never kept his oath to anyone else either. So basically, it sounds like they really expanded on the persuade system of Warman and combined it with the honor system. You also have skills slash stats to assist with this aspect. Charm helps you guess an NPC's motivation and appeal to them, while charisma helps you to inspire them. And even if you don't have much of an army at your back, roguery is a good way to convince someone that you're not someone they ever want to mess with. The game also tracks most major events. For instance, if you want, you could remind the Countess that the king you want to betray murdered her cousin, or passed her over when handing out fives. This will make your task much easier. They want players to feel the dynamic sandbox history of Calradia, and persuasion is often the time when a lord's past mistakes, the dirty deeds, the slight to fragile egos, the unpopular policies, all come home to roost. Lastly, the persuasion system is executed through dialogue options. You first need to steer the conversation to the relevant subject. You need to hint to a lord that his lead really isn't worth his service, or maybe suggest to a lady that being in your arms instead of another might be in her best interest. This was a system that was pretty interesting in Warband, and I imagine it'd be fun to use here as well when the game finally does come out, but we'll see. But thank you all so much for watching though, it looks like that's all the news we're getting in 2018 from Mountain Blade, but hope you all have a wonderful new year, and thank you so much for watching, and have a good night or day. Farewell folks.